Hello, thanks for joining us. This is where our guests arrive into the building every day. So let's have a look who is here on the show. We're meeting the Wax Whisperer audiologist, Neil Reiteter, has had more than 350 million views of his ear wax extraction videos. Uh, obviously, we want in on the action. Hussein, are you up for having your ear wax removed live on the air? So are you talking to me? Very good, we'll help him with that later. Neil will also have tips on keeping your ears nice and clean too. Uh, also today we are talking about the worrying rise in dog attacks. Our pet expert Chloe Fuller is here. Yes, the news over the last few days has been really scary, so I'll be explaining everything you need to know, including what to do if you're nervous about dogs in public. Important stuff. Also today, Master Chef finalist Emmerdale's Amy Walsh and Love Island's Lukovic will be popping in uh, to dish up on some of the gossip and also some food as well. We'll have a chat with them later. We'll also be chatting to a pop legend, Paul Young. We'll find out what four decades in showbiz looks like, including... Are you all right? Yes, I'm good, thank yeah. you. Have you got your toolbox with you? Because apparently you take it everywhere on tour with you, don't you? Oh, don't do that anymore. That was a bad old days. Was it? We'll hear about them later. Looking forward to that. Uh, speaking of tools, Denise Van Outen and Nazir Afsala here too. And Freddie, you're causing a bit of a stir in the kitchen, aren't you? Yes, I am. I'm making a lovely chicken fried rice dish using all leftovers and store covered essentials. But controversially, I'll be packing it into a Yorkshire pudding. Whoa, mm, yummy. Oh, sounds good. We'll find out about that later. Welcome to Seth's Pack Lunch, live from me. <laughs> visit to our icky infirmary where we take a look at the icky medical issues that people are obsessed with watching online today we are talking about ear wax removal mm -hmm. anyway you might think it's rank like me but it's had 10 billion views on tiktok and my next guest is something of a celebrity in this world audiologist uh, neil reitertar is known as the wax whisperer so let's take a look at some of his finest work now you might want to glance away if you're having your lunch hi everyone this is neil reitertar also known as the wax whisperer <laughs> Is it over yet? <laughs> oh, it's going to get worse. Because uh, in just a few moments, we're going to see Neil looking in the ears of his first patient, Hussein. Uh, but first, uh, you're going to tell us everything we need to know, aren't you? About yes, of course. Yes. Looking after our ears. Um, can you just explain what it is and what it's for, earwax? Yes, yeah, so earwax is a completely natural and healthy secretion produced by the ear in order to protect and serve it. And it does that in many different ways. Earwax is mildly acidic and the acidity helps to um, fight away harmful bacteria and fungal growth. And in addition, the acidity is a natural insect repellent, believe it or not. Oh, is it? It is, yeah. And um, earwax is also oily and greasy, so it helps to lubricate the delicate lining of skin in our ear and eardrum. So it prevents it from drying and cracking and becoming itchy. And also earwax is quite sticky, so it captures any foreign particles that may enter into the ear, almost like a spider's web. Yeah. Um, so yeah, earwax is good for us. Yeah, so it's good for us, but... We are obsessed with getting it out, aren't we? So what, what are the kinds of do's and don'ts when it comes to cleaning your ear and making sure, you know, you don't take too much out and you look after them properly? There's actually more don'ts than do's. Our ears are naturally designed to be self-cleansing. So there's a layer of skin that lines the ear canal and the eardrum. And as that skin dies and sheds, it naturally migrates out of the ear, almost like a conveyor belt. And any earwax sitting on the surface is naturally transported out of the ear. It's when we try and clean our ears ourselves using a cotton bud or an ear, um, uh, a toothpick or car keys or a screwdriver even, I've had someone admit to doing that. That's when uh, issues occur because you're simply impacting and pushing the earwax further yeah. in the ear and potentially causing trauma to the ear canal and eardrum. Um, the only thing I would recommend uh, for anyone to do is to use some medical grade olive oil spray, similar to this, uh, once a week or um, maybe uh, once a fortnight. And you just put it in your ear, a couple of squirts, let it sit and rest. And after a few minutes, come back the other way and let it drain. So you're almost washing oh. your ear out using oil as opposed to water because water can potentially yeah. be harmful for the ear. 
I, I've always thought with my little girl, who's three, you know, you, you can see the earwax build up in her ears and it's so hard not to want to stick a little bud in and get it out. But it's really, like you say, it's important we don't do that too much. Yeah, definitely. As I said, so the skin that lines the ear canal is so delicate and so yeah. thin. And if you start poking and meddling around in there, you can cause more damage than, than good, really. Yeah. So wh when is it a problem, earwax? So earwax becomes a problem when people um, exhibit symptoms. So some of the common symptoms with earwax is tinnitus, so a ringing or buzzing noise in your ears. Obviously, reduced hearing, a pressure sensation, a feeling of your ears feeling blocked. Some people can experience vertigo, so a feeling of the room spinning around or you spinning around the room. Some people can find it a bit painful. And believe it or not, some people can exhibit coughing fits because there's a branch of the uh, vagus nerve called the Arnold's nerve, which sits at the base of the ear canal. And if the wax plug is big and it's compressing against the canal, it can elicit a gag reflex. Oh, wow. And you've had some of these symptoms, haven't okay. you? You've had... Tell us the same, what, you, what you've gone through. Majority of the, uh, the symptoms that uh, Neil said, I've had them. I've had a uh, bit of a vertigo, I've had blocked ear, I've had ear aches. And uh, <clears throat> I think this was the only solution that I sort of found to yeah. go and see Neil to... Because so. you wouldn't think it was earwax, would you, to begin with? You, I bet you were, like, thinking, you know, vertical. Absolutely, like, absolutely. Earwax? I didn't know that until I sort of went to see... I went to a doctor, actually, initially, and they sort of just gave me some earwax removal thing, but it didn't really help me. Yeah. And then I'll, eventually I found Neil and uh, he sort of helped me out. Yeah, so you see Neil every kind of three to six months, don't you? To about a about couple of times a year, sometimes yeah. once a year. It depends really on... Yeah, what's going on what's with your ears. Going, exactly. So we're going to have a look at what's going on with your oh, ears no. now. <laughs> <laughs> you are right Good luck. That, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, uh, Neil, I'll let you explain what you're going to do. OK, so we're using this endoscope device called the iClearscope. It's a device I actually designed and developed to manufacture, and it's far better than um, the traditional otoscope. So this is what typically doctors use to oh, look yes. inside your ears. But the advantage with an endoscope is the wild field of view it gives. So when we're in the ear, and everyone will see it in a moment, it's like um, you're actually in your ear yourself. It's got such a panoramic view. So it just provides a better visualisation for me than to remove the earwax. Right, okie doke. So we're, go we're going to be able to see this as well, aren't we? I screen, think so, if technology so allows us. Move out of the way so everyone can see it. Excellent. If you sh should choose to see it, obviously you don't have to. So we're just <laughs> examining uh, Mr Mazur's left ear here. And as you can all see, there's some earwax there. Now, there's some humidity in the room, so you can see a bit of fogging and misting. So what I'll do, I'll just wipe that and go back in. So is that, in your professional opinion, a lot of earwax? Um, there is a little gap at the top, so I'll just wipe that again. Um, so there is a partial view of the eardrum, but it's significant enough to, to cause symptoms, definitely. So I would recommend that's, get, that's removed. Yeah. So you're going to take that out now. How are you going to do that? Um, I'm actually going to use um, a bit of microsuction um, because you can see we're getting a bit of condensation there. When we yeah. perform microsuction, it, you won't get that. So we're going to hoover a little bit out. In fact, actually, there's a little gap at the top. So let's just see if we can scoop a little bit first and right. then we'll use we'll revert to the microsuction probe. Right. So you're all right, Hussein? I'm perfect, thank so you. Good. But you never thought everyone on telly would be looking inside your ears one day, did you? Not today, did <laughs> Is this something you can get on the NHS, Neil, or do you, do you have to pay for it privately? So, on the NHS, typically, it's um, ir irrigation, so they use water. Um, so, water, for me, I'm not a biggest advocate of water because it can lead to um, an ear infection, potentially. Yeah. yeah. So, you're going to uh, suck this next bit out I... and they're going to be able to see it on the... Yeah. I think we're just going to do a bit more of the scalpel oh, right, so, well, with the Jobson horn. It's called a correct. Yeah. Uh, so, unfortunately, we're just getting a bit of fogging in the room because it's a bit... Oh, you can see that a bit more yeah. now. And then... So, you're just going to scoop a little bit out and obviously you're professional at this, so... Oh, I'm going to have to turn away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, let's have a look. Oh, yeah, you can see. Yeah. And then I'm just going to go with the microsuction probe just to see if there's anything left in there. How long does it normally take then to do this? Does... Uh, you mean to remove earwax from yeah. an ear? So it can vary. I normally allocate half an hour for a procedure. Oh. Oh. 
There's like half the nation will be turned away from the screen and the other half will be getting closer to the screen to watch it happening. Such as the... Can you believe how popular it's been, your videos? No. I wax up people here? It's still quite surreal. Um, I often get, nowadays, recently, um, get recognised in the local supermarket. Do you? Are you that wax guy on YouTube? I'm like, yeah, that's me. And yeah. they're wishing me uh, the best of luck and keep up the hard oh. work. So I think the suction probe is actually blocked with all that wax, so I'm going to have to unblock that. Right. <laughs> so it's blocked, that's... Yeah. And I mean, then, how's it, how's it feeling for you? What's that it, process like? How's it feel? It just tickles a little bit. There's nothing yeah. seriously. It doesn't hurt. Uh, in fact, I'm getting better now. Yeah. So let's okay. take a final look is that, Can you already feel the difference with that bit of wax? It's 100%. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So I'll get it. Because it's sticky wax, sometimes it can smear the lens, so yeah. I'm just going to wipe that. Right, well, we're going to leave you to uh, carry on doing that and finishing the wax extraction. But thank you very much for that, uh, Neil, and thanks, Hussein, for being a willing <laughs> guinea pig on the shore for us all to see it. Uh, still to come, uh, the government minister in charge of keeping us safe online is joining us to explain why she thinks finding companies is the answer. Michelle Donnellan will be here straight after the break. <laughs>